So the official version of iOS 14 is finally here and one thing Apple does well is software support for older gen devices. And here it is running on an iPhone 7. Now generally speaking, I wouldn't recommend upgrading right away even though it is an official release, there's always some sort of bug. Although iOS 14 has been quite reliable and stable even through its beta stages. So here it is running on my iPhone 7 and while it does port a rather smaller display, widgets and the overall UI still look great. Widget information is still pretty visible and there's actually now a handful of apps that take advantage of the home screen widgets with the expectation of seeing developers adopt this in the future. It's also good to see that there aren't any size restrictions when it comes to widget sizing. So we can go ahead and choose between three different widget sizes despite the iPhone 7's smaller display. And again, unfortunately, we don't get to freely play them wherever we'd like, but it is nice to see them here. Animations are fairly fluid with the occasional stutter, but RAM management is where it's at. Surprisingly good with the iPhone 7's 2 gigs of RAM, I was surprised to see that apps were remaining in the same place I left off without the need to refresh. So overall, in terms of speed, I'd say it's not bad. Like I mentioned before, there is the occasional stutter here and there, but it's nothing too crazy. And I know there has been a few comparisons showing iPhones on iOS 13 running a bit faster and smoother. But since this is the initial release, I'm hopeful that Apple will fix this with future updates. And usually that ends up being the case. Now, battery life, on the other hand, has taken a bit of a hit, not so much during regular use, rather when just in standby. So I'd say if you're someone that's a moderate user, you're going to be seeing that charger sooner rather than later. I also noticed the phone overheating a bit or just a tad bit warmer to the touch after some normal use or just scrolling through social media, checking out some web pages and texting. And naturally, that stays or builds as you keep using your device. So keep that in mind. Now, the overheating issue isn't new to iOS 14, so hopefully it's something that can be addressed. Obviously, you don't want your device just overheating after some normal use. But I mean, the fact that a four-year-old device is still receiving updates is just great. Generally, you're getting a lot of these same UI elements as Apple's newer devices, with the exception of perhaps speed and some features, including that back tap feature, which is a shame, but we can't get everything. The back tap would have been great to see here. It basically allows you to map it for some extra functions, but essentially you're getting a lot of the same features on these older gen devices, which is pretty neat. Also just keep in mind that because this is a four year old device, batteries tend to wear out. So if your battery is not holding a full charge anymore, you might want to check out your settings to make sure it's not getting throttled by Apple, which would mean you're going to be seeing worse performance. Now, overall, it's great to see Apple still supporting their older gen devices. We usually see devices see their life cycles or support cycles and sooner. Now, if you do or did upgrade and wish to downgrade, I believe you can up until Apple stops seeding their iOS 13 firmware. But if you're planning on upgrading now, just consider the fact that you might encounter some minor bugs. I'd say if you're on the fence, just wait to upgrade. Apple usually fixes a lot of the initial bugs fairly quickly. And in the upcoming weeks, we should see some updates to iOS 14. Anyways, let me know how your experience has been on iOS 14. If you did upgrade or let me know why you didn't. I'm curious to know. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Subscribe if you want weekly tech videos like this one, and we'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace.